Alright, so my first video is up and people are posting freely in the comments section. Let me say this straight out of the gate. I will be blocking and deleting comments from people who are simply profane and vulgar and insulting. If you want to contribute to an actual discussion or address something you see in the video, feel free to do so. If you're just here because you have a bone to pick, you're not welcome. That being said, in this video I'm going to address some of the comments that caught my attention in the comment section for my last video. I recommend you check the video out before you watch this one, otherwise you may not know what we're talking about. Uh, I will, however, reiterate my main point in my last video. My main point is this. If you have a painting, and you can see scrolling behind me a painting of mine, let's say that I created that painting for a purpose, and that purpose was to impress a girl. I'm just saying, maybe that was my intention. That could not be discovered using the scientific method if you only had the painting in your hands. Sure, you could measure the painting, you could, uh, you know, you could do all kinds of experiments with the painting itself, but that will never yield the information that it was created to impress a girl, let alone a specific girl. That information is privy to you only if the creator reveals it to you. And that was essentially my point, that if we approach the world with the intention of only analyzing it scientifically, we should already know that science will never yield uh, to the field of teleology, the study of purpose, of design, of intent. Um, and so I, I cautioned people, naturalists and atheists out there on YouTube, who, you know, champion themselves as um, scientific and sort of look down on anyone who believes that the universe has certain qualities, such as purpose and design and a creator. Well, my caution is this, that science can't detect those things, not directly anyways, and, uh, and therefore you shouldn't conclude based on your scientific findings that therefore there is no such thing as a purpose or creator for the universe. Um, because we can see in a, something as simple as a painting that science will not yield the idea that there is a purpose to it or that even there's a creator. Uh, and that was sort of addressed more, more thoroughly in my last video. Anyways, let's go to the comments and see what people had to say. All right. Take a look at this comment, which I think puts a finger on an important issue. How do we know that you painted the painting? Well, why don't we take a vote right now? How many of you out there believe that I'm telling you the truth and that this is a painting that I did? All right, now you've decided. Now, how many of you are withholding judgment and are skeptical about its true author until you could actually get your hands on the painting itself and analyze it using the scientific method? I'm going to imagine that that would be a very small minority of you. And even less, I imagine there are going to be people who believe that I did not paint the painting at all. Now, what I'm attempting to illustrate with this point is that there are certain things that we can know without using the scientific method. In this case, identifying the author of a painting. The relevance of this, of course, is identifying the creator of the universe. All right, this comment is very similar to the last one, but it's a little more refined. He says, my argument is self-defeating because, for instance, you could have stolen that picture, oh my, from a friend and just imposed your own opinion on it. Unless we can be pretty sure you are the author, the purpose you describe might be false, we cannot tell. Until you can show that the Bible is actually inspired by the Creator, we have no reason to assume that it contains anything besides the human author's own opinions and ideas. That's the crux. And that's why we don't just accept that purpose. And I think that's a very fine argument. So, what is the issue at hand here, and what, what was the purpose of me bringing up the painting? My point was that the scientific method is not going to be able to tell us who is the author in the event that there are competing authors. And there are. That's why there are competing religions. And that's also why uh, you have this comment here asking, you know, how do we know the Bible is the, ins is the inspired word of God? Indeed, how do we know that? And wouldn't it be worth finding out if it is or if it isn't? We already know that this isn't a scientific endeavor, and yet it's to the scientists we often look to find out, you know, should we be looking to religion? To, for an answer? Should we maybe be looking for a message from God? Because some of the scientists or atheists, naturalists here on YouTube would say no, of course not. Because science somehow has proven that there is no creator and that there is no purpose or design when what I'm trying to caution you is that science could never have yielded that information in the first place, which is why they're coming to that conclusion. So, now, how do we know the Bible is the inspired word of God? Well, I never endeavored to prove that the Bible was the inspired word of God in my last video. That's something I'd like to do in a future video. But I think we're getting closer to the real issue. Here's another comment. 
This user says, interesting, I get what you're saying about science not being the all and end all of knowledge, but how do we know the Bible is the word of God? A similar sentiment to the last comment. How do you even know God cares? This has probably been said a thousand times. How do you know the Bible is God's signature, if you will, on his painting? How do we know there isn't something within the painting that is or is not a signature? Maybe there is, and science could find it. Who knows? Well, I can't comment on what science has not yet found, because apparently, uh, at least uh, to the naturalists uh, here on YouTube, Apparently, science has not yielded the existence of God and has not yielded the design and purpose that the Christians are claiming there is, that you know, God created the universe so that we could know him. Now, there are, of course, Christians who claim, um, and I have claimed in the past, that science can draw us to God. I believe that we can look at the creation and say, well, this looks like uh, evidence for a creator. But again, uh, my point was that the creation itself does not contain the creator. So we cannot test God directly. We can perhaps test him indirectly by way of what he created. But that's not exactly my point, uh, although that does seem to have something to do with the signature that we're talking about here. Um, intelligent design often talks about um, you know, the DNA being God's signature in the creation because DNA is information and information uh, is a type of communication and communication requires an intelligence. But that's something we can talk about another time. The, the issue at hand, of course, is, is how do we know? And we're dealing with authorship and teleology, purpose. What was the intent of the author? We've recognized here, look, this guy's asking me um, unscientific questions. How do we know the Bible is the word of God? Uh, that is not a scientific endeavor, again, although it's an important question to ask, isn't it? But should you go to a naturalist with that question? No, of course not, because their method of discovering truth using science alone could never yield the answers to these questions. Uh, so it's to the theologian that you should be looking and uh, be very skeptical of people who are naturalists who say, you know, religion doesn't have any of the answers. Well, they're saying that only because they only believe in science. Let's take a look at this comment. I've heard this argument more times than I've cared to hear in my life. Science isn't meant to explain the subjective, it is meant to explain the objective. No, it will not tell you what a painter was thinking when painting a painting, but then again, it wasn't meant to. Science deals with facts, not opinions. The value of something is entirely based on opinion, therefore it's subjective and science isn't meant to measure it. I do, I do see a problem here, and the problem is this. What the painter was thinking when painting the painting, the reason for him painting it, is not subjective. It is an objective fact about the painter, and it, also, it is also an objective fact about the painting itself, because if it wasn't for that fact, the painting never would have come into existence in the first place. So what you're identifying here is what I've been saying all along, that science cannot detect teleology, which is the purpose of an author and the purpose of the object um, that is created. So I agree in part. Now, the last thing, that the value, quote-unquote, of something is entirely based on opinion, therefore it's subjective. What he's really meaning to say is that value is not an objective fact. Well, I'd like to take this uh, by way of reductio ad absurdum. I'm going to reduce this to absurdity by taking it to its logical conclusion. Let's look at this waterfall, and I say something like, I think this waterfall is beautiful. What I'm attempting to say is something about the waterfall, not about my subjective feelings. Now, you may say, no, 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 the, the waterfall is not actually beautiful. It contains nothing of beauty in it. Rather, you have beautiful feelings about the waterfall. Well, why don't we take that to another area, like morality, and I say murder is evil. That is to say, I mean the act of murder is objectively wrong. Well, if you're going to take this argument that value is entirely based on opinion and is therefore subjective, then what you're going to have to say is that I don't mean to say that murder is wrong or evil, it's that my feelings about murder are wrong or evil. But that's not ex that is not what I'm trying to say at all. I'm trying to say that murder is wrong, right? I'm trying to say something about murder, not about my feelings. What this type of thinking does in terms of morality, which is uh, I think where we're going to go in our next video, is that it reduces morality to mere opinion. And since opinion is subjective, that means there is no absolute objective right and wrong, which of course most naturalists will conclude. Now this is also why uh, naturalist societies like Nazi Germany or communist Russia, why they felt it was okay to kill so many people, because they didn't think it was objectively wrong to murder people. After all, why should they? Since, you know, morality would therefore only be opinion, it's subjective, which means there are no absolutes, so they get to, you know, do whatever they want. And that would be where this type of thinking takes us. And I'm not saying every naturalist is going to go and murder people, but it certainly leads way to allow people who are, um, you know, of that mind, it gives them a justifiable reason to go down that path. There is nothing stopping them 
such as an objective morality and a true value of human life that is not merely based on opinion, but that is an actual fact. And again, uh, naturalism will never lead you to that conclusion, that life does have an objective value. This is an interesting comment. Sean, you're forgetting one thing. Purpose is a construct of the human mind. Purpose does not exist in itself. It is something that humans quantify actions by. If it happens to do something helpful or beneficial, it has, quote, purpose. By saying that the universe should have a purpose, you're trying to quantify it. But that does not truly give it a true purpose. You're just trying to quantify usefulness. Well, the first problem here is I never said that the universe should have a purpose. Who am I to say whether it should or shouldn't? What I'm asking is, does it have a purpose? And the only way it could have a purpose, as I think you pointed out here, is if there is purpose in someone's mind. Now, it can't be a human mind, because human beings are a product within the actual universe. And the question is, does the universe and humanity as a whole, as a unit together, do they have a purpose found somewhere in a mind, in the mind of its creator, if indeed there is a creator? That, that's the question I'm asking, and I don't think you've really addressed uh, that issue. By simply limiting purpose to the human mind, you're excluding the possibility that there are other intelligences that are not human, that transcend humanity, that perhaps uh, also appreciate uh, value and purpose and meaning and things like that. You can tell the painting is painted, regardless of who or what painted it. The same is not true of the universe. And if I asked you how you knew that, you would say that we've never seen a natural process bring about a painting but every painting that we've ever seen has, indeed, uh, had a confirmed author or painter. And I'd agree with you, absolutely. The, ch the same cannot be said of the universe because we've never had another universe to compare our own with such that we could observe natural processes bringing about another universe and then say, well, perhaps our own came about in a similar fashion. When Thunderfoot was asked, you know, how did the universe come to be, he said that it is an unknown. I don't know. So you don't know how it began? And you don't know if it's, it's, it's unknown. To you. It's unknown to me. So, let me get this straight. It's an unknown, which means it could be God. I don't see why you would rule that out if you don't know, right? And yet, Thunderfoot often feels the need to condescend to those who believe in God. I mean, let's face it, I would say the majority of the planet does believe in God and has believed in God traditionally. Um, I think there's... Four out of six people on the planet was the, the most recent statistic. I mean, there's two billion uh, Christians or Catholics, uh, however you want to divide it up, about two billion Muslims, and then the rest of the population. The majority believe in God. And yet Thunderfoot, you know, feels that he is somehow enlightened, that he's smarter than that, that he knows better. And yet he admits that the creation of the universe is, is an unknown to him. Uh, and again, I, I just don't see why he feels the need then to both condescend to those who do believe in God, and then on top of that, why is he himself not open to the idea of God if it's an unknown? Is it possible that, you know, there could be a God? And is it possible also that there's a bias at work, that he doesn't want you to think that there's a God because he himself doesn't want there to be a God? And I, I'm going to deal with that in, in a future video. I, I feel like modern atheism uh, doesn't want there to be God, that that's actually their desire. Um, as opposed to traditional atheism, when they said that there is no God, they said it in a defeatist attitude, whereas the new atheism says there is no God as if that's the best thing ever. Um, so I think it's emotionally driven. I think there's a bias at work, and I think that the tool of science is being misused. Uh, as I said in the comments uh, last video, uh, this type of science makes you an enemy of science because science should be a tool in man's hand that helps him to identify his place in reality, in the universe. But this type of science, scientism, the belief that science is the only way to know things, as I said, can blind you. It can be a barrier to knowing your true purpose. And isn't that the most important thing, to know what you're doing on Earth? And that's not something that science itself can demonstrate. You have to, you have to look to the Creator, uh, as I said. So, the paintings were intelligently designed, and we now don't have to find a stamp in it that points to you. You told us yourself you made it. That's my point. Yes, if the creator tells you why he made it, that, that, that's about it. All you need to do is trust that he's telling you the truth. And if he is, then you have, a, you, know, you have access to the truth regarding its purpose. I think that about wraps it up for now. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, I pray that God ha has blessed you with it.